top of everything. And naturally, that came so easy. Featured in the documentary Be About It, Filipino American AJ Habanero was a triathlete, strong, fit, and a fighter. He helped found Team Cancer Sucks, which raised funds for patients, including his own daughter, Izzy, who was diagnosed with leukemia when she was two. But at the time, AJ didn't understand the severity of his own illness, chronic hepatitis B, a virus he contracted at birth. His wife, Melissa, says it wasn't until after a bike ride that led to breathing difficulties that AJ, an x-ray technician himself, read his own MRI results that showed tumors in his liver. Three months later, he was gone. I think he just didn't know what to do with it ever since he was a kid. Um, he was very vigilant about being healthy. He was, as you would say, 75% vegan. You know, he lived a very active lifestyle. So I think it was just a matter of he didn't know that, yeah, you have hep B and you need to follow up with that. It's very manageable if you know. If you don't know, that's where, that's where the problem arises. Um, it tr it's really a silent killer. San Francisco TV reporter Alan Wong had the misfortune, or rather good fortune, of suffering from an inflamed liver. And I happen to be that one in ten of Asian mm -hmm. people infected with hepatitis B. A lot of people have flu-like symptoms and never really recognize that they had a flare-up. Uh, mine was a little more extreme, so I actually went to the doctor where they tested me and screened me for it and said, you have hep B. Just 26 years old at the time, he and his family soon began putting together the pieces. When you die from liver cancer or cirrhosis, they don't say he died from hepatitis B. So we never knew that. They realized that three of his uncles who had jaundice died due to hepatitis B and that Alan had contracted it at birth from his mother who was born in Shanghai. Alan now takes a pill every day, has two ultrasounds a year, and tests his blood every six months. He went from 13 million copies of the virus attacking his liver to being undetectable. There's such a stigma attached to it. The stigma is that uh, it's caused by unhygienic behavior or risky behavior, drug use. But the truth is most people contract hepatitis B through birth. If you know about it, you can diffuse it. If you don't know about it, you're a walking, ticking time bomb. With more than 50% of the hepatitis B cases in the U.S. being Asian Americans, one of the world's leading experts, Dr. Samuel So, founded the Asian Liver Center at Stanford University. Researchers experiment with everything from modifying chemical structures of Chinese herbs to using big data to analyze old drugs to attack liver cancer caused by the hep B virus. While cutting edge research goes on here, Stanford's Asian Liver Center does take on some very different functions for most academic programs. It spends just as much time spreading awareness, working on policy initiatives, and training healthcare workers globally. The center has conducted studies that have found a lack of knowledge in medical staff worldwide, including U.S. doctors. We found that about 25% uh, of the doctors did not recognize the blood test to order. And also 60 to 70% of the doctors felt that the medical training did not prepare them well to, to manage people with chronic hepatitis B. The Liver Center's office in Peking University even produced this video for subways and airports in China to help quash irrational fears of hep B carriers. It explains that the virus doesn't spread through food or utensils. Although the U.S. recently included free adult vaccinations in the national health care plan, so says hep B treatments are still underfunded. It's probably less than 5% of what HIV gets for annual funding. So viral hepatitis uh, has now risen to the number seven cause of all causes of death in the world. So it has actually surpassed HIV. Because of the lack of awareness, there's very little political will. I can do either one. Alan Wong's own lack of awareness led to him infecting his wife, Jill. But her immune system was strong enough to naturally rid it from her system. I want people to see this as a disease that affects everybody because if we only put it in a box, if we put it in a box and say it's only those Asian people who get it, it's really easy to ignore. It's really, really easy for people to ignore when they think, that can't happen to me. For Melissa Habanero, she just hopes AJ's story will encourage others to get checked, something that is completely free. She also teaches her sons about their father's battle while comforting her daughter Izzy, who was very close to her father. Since his passing, 
I haven't seen her cry until the film. So I think it's nice because it kind of um, warms her up. You know, it, it sets her up and it, it opens her up to me. And she knows exactly what her dad was going through, that he was a fighter. Izzy, too, she's in remission from leukemia. She sees her dad as a hero. Who used to golf with him? Thanks. Mark New, CCTV, San Francisco. About 90% of healthy adults who become infected with the hepatitis B virus will recover. They'll even develop uh, protection against future hepatitis B infections. But for infants and young children, the opposite is true. 90% of infants who become infected will develop a chronic infection, putting their lives in danger. A vaccine is available for all age groups, yet in some places, doctors say it's not routine, routine enough. This is the percentage of one-year-olds who get the hepatitis B vaccine at the bottom of the list Children in Southeast Asia, just under three out of four, are vaccinated.